Welcome to Mission Majima, Ajahn. Ajahn. Ajahn, so tell us about Majima number 13, the Mahadukha Kanda Sutta. So the discourse on the greater mass of suffering is a really uh, brilliant sutta. It's also somewhat harrowing um, in the sense that uh, we get a very lengthy rundown of the depth of our folly. Um, and so in it, the, we have a bunch of uh, monks who go and speak with wanderers of other sects and ask uh, the wanderers of other sects, ask what the difference is between the Buddhist teaching and their own, um, seeing as they purport also to describe the complete comprehension of these three main realms of experience, sensuality, uh, forms, or uh, some translations say the body, but I think forms is probably broader and more accurate, and feelings. The monks reporting it to the Buddha um, ask if that was a, you know, what the Buddha would say in response. And the Buddha says, although these wanderers might say that they uh, preach a complete understanding of these, without understanding um, and uh, describing comprehension of all three of these realms in terms of what we can call the gratification triad, which is understanding each of these in terms of the attraction, the asada, the uh, drawback, the adinava, and the escape, the nisarna, um, that one cannot say to have truly understood the um, completely any of these three realms. And then he goes through a brilliant exposition of all three. So the uh, attraction of uh, sensuality being just the glow or the satisfaction you get from the five cords of sensual pleasure, namely the different sense contact. The drawback is uh, an amazing exposition of paragraph after paragraph of all the, the crescendo of suffering which we bring about through pursuit of the sensuality. And the escape is abandoning uh, delight and lust for sensuality. The escape is actually the same in all three cases, just that abandonment of delight and lust, uh, chandaraga. For form, he describes the attraction as a, uh, a beautiful form of a woman. This is uh, addressed to bhikkhus, so I'm sure there'd be an equivalent for a different congregation. Um, and the uh, drawback is the decay of that form into death and a skeleton, etc. The escape similarly abandoning delight and lust and feelings, the attraction are the height or the apex of feeling, which in the Buddhist conception is the four jhanas. And the drawback is this simple line that all feelings are impermanent, unsatisfactory, and not self. Um, and the escape is once again abandoning of delight and lust. So it's a, a brilliant sutta. And yeah, one I'm really glad we've made our way to here. So Ajahn, what have you found to be interesting and you know most worth drawing out of this? Yeah, I find that gratification triad, as you call it, to be just fascinating. Um, it's one of the Buddha's many uh, s frameworks, the schema that he gives. Uh, I think of it almost as like a, a meat grinder. Um, you can put these different things into it, and it really just, you see how the, the sausage is made, basically, like how the you can also think of it as a, like a Buddhist cost benefit analysis. Whereas in addition to cost and benefit, the gratifications and the drawbacks, you also see the, uh, alternative. So cost benefit alternative CBA analysis or hmm. a three step reality check is another way to frame it. Um, and that's great. It's the Buddha really, uh, removing our fascination with things. You know, oftentimes we just, latch on to one thing that we like this um the phrasing that he uses with regards to forms seen by the eye uh sounds smells taste touch which are wished for desired desirable agreeable likable connected with sensual desire and provocative of lust just that the buddha kind of foregrounds that that this oh that's really how most people interact with the world is they try to increase those things mm. and but to be able to look okay yeah there is a gratification there is something that we we like there it's likable but there's also a drawback to that and then there's an escape 
So I just love that that framework and the Buddha offering us in this sutta kind of a schematic mapping of those three realms that you spoke of, of uh, sensuality and form, or also translated as sights by Bhante Sujato, and of feelings into this meat grinder of the gratification triad is just fascinating. Hmm. And for yourself, Ajahn, what do you find most interesting? I think that's a great rundown. And the uh, Buddhist cost-benefit analysis, that's beautiful. I think the fact that the Buddha says that is what constitutes full comprehension, you know, with the handful of leaves saying, you know, you don't have to understand necessarily the whole intricacy of each of these things, but rather if you just understand what the attraction is and what the drawback is, and when you measure those correctly, understanding they're unworthy of giving ourselves to and of investing our hearts in, that this is as much comprehension as is as is needed. This is full comprehension. Um, and then just him, I think some suttas, you don't need to necessarily draw out any hidden insights so much as just look at what the Buddha is giving to us on the page or in the sutta. And in this case, just the, yeah, the depth of our folly, you know, with the gratification of sensuality being so middling and then the crescendo of the level of suffering that comes from it and reading it, it's just visceral and utterly relatable. Um, everything from trying to, you know, gain the wealth to feed that sensuality in us to the desire to protect it and inability to, um, made off by hateful airs, by kings, by floods. Um, and from there on to, uh, just, um, you know, even worst levels of conflict, including the impressive description of all the torture devices that were, you know, available at the time. So it's just that him laying out that equation so starkly, it, it really makes clear the level of our delusion. And then where the brilliance I find for his going through the gratification triad in the sense of sensuality is in the length of the drawbacks, the adinava. What I find so fascinating about the gratification triad in the case of feelings is the simplicity of the drawback. It's just that all feelings, no matter how refined, are impermanent, uh, unsatisfactory, and not self. And in the end, they can't be a refuge. But that simple um, indictment of, of even that. The one other thing I'd add is that the um, that gratification triad is so helpful because truly until we understand like what's attracting us to something, um, often we'll ignore the downsides, but there's moments, say, with anger where we feel the pain of it, but we don't quite understand what keeps drawing us to it. And that the Buddha's saying that you need to understand that as well to let go. Um, so with anger, for example, just the sense of kind of power and aliveness and a rush um, that draws us back to that state. Um, it's, as you said, just a very powerful meat grinder to run all experience through. And um, yeah, it leads to a lot of insights. So Ajahn, um, what have you found relevant for your, for your practice? Honestly, in rereading this, and I think when I read it for the first time, probably before I, definitely before I ordained, just feeling so much gratitude for the Buddha to put it out so clearly. It's like, okay, yeah, there, there is this gratification, but it's only so much and the drawbacks are so extensive. So yeah, when the Buddha is talking about the, the drawbacks and the gratifications, you know, that's somewhat medieval terms or, um, yeah, the tortures are quite antiquated, but work life, it's, it still has all its drawbacks as it did 2,500 years ago and all the stress and working for someone else and, uh, not having a sense of agency is still all the same today and that there is an alternative. Also pointing to the results of um, how sensuality leads to war and it's the same today. All the grabs for oil and basically seeing this exact connection between my own cravings and addictions and our society's need for plastic and oil mm -hmm. and gasoline 
is just all the more pertinent and harmful today. Hmm. So, Anjan, what is the word of the day? The word of the day is raga. And what's the definition, Anjan? So raga can be translated as passion or desire, um, craving. It comes from the root raj, which means either to desire or to color. So somewhat cognate with the French word rouge or the English word rouge to paint your face, that which colors the self, colors the face, colors experience. So, well, thank you, Ajahn. And we'll see everyone for Mission Majima next week, MN14. Yes. All right.